And we're back. Welcome back to Retro Time and Recast. Uh, we are delighted to be back in the house with everybody. Uh, Challenger Ted, how are you doing, my man? Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. It's been uh, it's been a long time coming to be the. Cha- I was meant to be the challenger. Then I had to go through a triple threat. Then I had to go through me. you again. And now I get to challenge Greg. It's been it's been a long time coming for something that I, was already my right to challenge him. You and have you're no very, right. you're, you're Only very, the champ has rights. You were very generous to go one on one me to get to get to this stage. So well, I had to go. I had to go one on one on one, and then go one on one, and yeah. now I get to go one on one with the champion. Like I had to. I gave up my shot. Make it make it count to, go, to okay. go through everybody to get back to here. You know, so technically, you should be a champion of sorts, shouldn't you? I'd, I'd, be the in, I'd be the interim <laughs> champ if there was such thing, but uh, that only happens when people go out sick, and unfortunately, Greg's not the one that does that. So I know <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have the name champ. How's tricks? I'm still here, baby. Yeah, you're the constant this, death taxes, and then Greg is the champ now. Huh? This man's coming after my strap. All those weeks that I had to like battle through, they don't count as part of your reign, by the way. You no, can't no. Say, you can't say I was champ for this many weeks when you fucking sat on the sideline judging, right? No, sure, we, we never, we've never ever said this many weeks. It's this many wins. I know. Yeah, I'm just making sure that you know you don't change it in case you're you know trying to up your up your credibility a little bit more, you know? I don't need to up my credibility. I hold the longest reign. I hold the most wins. Yeah, but you can always up your credibility, you know what I mean? It's always worth upping your credibility. (laughs) Well, boys, I'm glad I'm not in this one tonight because this is a, well, it's a great, I love this film that we're picking. Ah, it's brilliant. Uh, Another sure for, if you you like your action films, a sure for a hit from Arnie, it's Commando. Yes. Absolutely. Such a film. Oh, I love this film. I mean, this and what was it? Predator, Predator. Terminator, the original Terminator. They're my three favorite of his. Now, I love Terminator too, but those are my three favorites of his. Like, you know. but see, the, last the, those, last action hero. See, those other two are very, very different because although he has a couple of one-liners in those, this was like peak Arnie being yeah. like, "Let me get those one-liners in, boys. Go on." <laughs> and from here, he just Every kicked on with it. Yeah, after, after this, it was like, this is kind of the era where everything he did, he was like, I need a couple of cool one-liners in yeah. here, lads. Well, he cemented his legacy, didn't he, with all those one-liners? And... Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Is there ever been an actor that's had as many one-liners as Arnie? I can't think of any. And Actually, I don't know if you've seen that new thing that he's in Fubar. Have you seen that? No. So, it's just like, it's the series, like, you know, but he, that, he has a new saying and that, it's like, that's it and that's all. That's his new fucking mm-hmm. saying. Like he doesn't say I'll be back in it once, but he says that about several times. I see that'll probably <laughs> that'll... they'll probably keep that for a little while, you know. That'll yeah. be like a season ender for him to say, I'll be back. Oh imagine. <laughs> well I wouldn't mind anyway. I'll I'll be back's probably owned by James Cameron at this stage. I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, it probably is. Who cares? Once people still say and remember Arnie, that's oh, all yeah. I think. <laughs> so we have seven. Um recasts to do as, as normal um, and as always we ask the lads to put their suggestions into the, the whatsapp chat group that we have in case of any discrepancies so lads want to do that now that's yeah, mine's right. in there. there's greg there's and mine in there's as well and i haven't looked at greg's either just to make sure so i don't no, know no. what he's coming up with that's fine um do we have any other any other guest uh picks this week now uh, Tom was supposed to send me a list uh, and he gave me one person on the list so I'll read that person now so unless he matched me for the rest of them <laughs> he gave me one person right okay and of course Sick Note is not with us this week so that's fine sick. okie dokie sick, sick Note may or may not be dead we're not sure we he's hope definitely not sick. he's definitely <laughs> he's sick. sick yeah <laughs> anyway dead. let's tired Roy let's go with the show Um. I'm assuming you now. I, again, I have my list here. I presume we're not casting Jenny in this, are we? we no, are we, no, we left Jenny out. I'll, I'll, yes, although Kirby. she is, in, although she is integral to it, it's one of those things where there's only a very small set of actresses that you can really pick from here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. Okie dokie. Um, let's start off then. Wish. What about Cook, played by Winston Duke? What a man. What a man. Absolute beast. Uh, you you would nearly forget how big Cook was. I know. 
Hey, just to clarify, he was played by Bill Duke. What did, did he say? That? He said Winston Duke. Oh, Winston Duke's <laughs> a big unit too. Yeah, like it was. I'm pretty sure Duke. I said that as well when we done something else with a minute. Yeah, you did. I and I just like to clarify that. that Bill Duke. It, it wasn't Winston Duke. He he hasn't gone back and you know been in those films and Sorry, Bill Duke. My take. apologies. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, the, best, the best thing you'll ever see Bill Duke do was I see you yeah jeez oh, he's everything he does he's brilliant and to be fair to him he was uh, he just seemed at that time to be casting a lot and yeah. nailed everything it's not a man like he could have been phoning in jobs um, I think he was he seemed like he was relatively friendly with Arnie around this sort of time because yeah. he, he ended know. up in a lot of films with Arnie like it's three, I think he was in. Mm. Might have been, might have been three. Definitely two. I love that. Is that in this where he goes? Uh, I just green is gonna kick your ass. Yeah. I eat green braids for breakfast, yeah, and now I'm quite it. hungry. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Enough of this macho crap, bullshit. Man. Yeah. <laughs> no. um, oh, right, like, who's first? Champ as always. Champion. Go for the, the champion. champion. Um. Like the like to be honest with you, you could have went. There's a couple you could have went for. You could have went for Winston Duke here, which uh, I did. So you know, just so you know. Okay, I, I figured as much. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, what I got. Him. After that slip of the tongue, I yeah, think that's what you'd done. Yeah, <laughs> I think he's just probably too big. Too big, yeah. That uh, I have him as a backup, and I I had the exact same size as you, Greg. He's just too he's a, too massive. Like, like he is. Like he'd be probably as big as Arnie was nearly. I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had Idris Elba, but there's no way he's taking that. Mm. Uh, I suppose he, he, you've I've seen him in some random things, so maybe. But uh, I went with Mike Calder here. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna level up on this, and I had the the yeah, same. I can understand that. My only battle was between him and Winston Duke, and at the same thing as Greg, <laughs> I was just like, he's just Winston Duke. If I make Winston Duke cook. Then I need to get someone as Matrix who's bigger than him. And I was like, Jesus, we're gonna struggle there now, boys. And uh, don't forget at the end of the last episode we did ban the rock from being used. So he's the only other person you could have put in as Matrix, I'd say. Yeah, we did say no rock and no Danny DeVito. Oh yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> um but the like, the rock, if you're putting in if you're putting in Winston Duke, you have to put in the rock, really. Yeah, it has to be someone like that. Like there's and there's not many people that size anymore. Yeah, you know. Calder's a big unit as well, though. To be fair to him, he is, but he's not as bulky, I guess. As uh, yeah. wasn't as he in did. Luke Cage? Wasn't he? Yeah, he was Luke uh, Cage. Yeah. yeah. Will Calder? Uh, yeah. Uh, Mike Calder. Mike okay. Calder. What's wrong with Fuck's me? Sake. What's <laughs> wrong with me, lads? I don't even know who Will Calder is. <laughs> I know, just nobody. <laughs> Roy, okay. You know, so I know a Will Calder and a Mike yeah. Calder. <laughs> <laughs> it's their love. Try say that real quick. Yeah. <laughs> right, we got one, one, one each starting off, which is great. That's a nice start. It's a nice, uh, it's a nice start for the champion, not a nice start for me. Yeah, ah, it's interesting. Don't worry, you'll be grand. <laughs> right, uh, I'm trying to look at the list here. Well, that about what about uh, Kirby? Yeah, the very this, this was a pick, this was a pick your pick your guest, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a very small role. Um, I had two people here, one was Simon Pegg who I think kind of fit in there a little bit, like, you know, because as, as we said, it could kind of be anyone here. Um, but I just went with someone who kind of has that authority as a, um, as a like general that he's done in films before. And I just went with Ed Harris. Um, I think, I think he could do it quite well. And he both seems like he's like trying to convince uh, Matrix back in the whole time. Yeah. But he's also willing to accept when Matrix is like, no, 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 like, he has that honour that if Matrix says he's out, then Matrix is out. You know what I mean? Okay. Good show. Yeah. Champ? Uh, I have Nick Cage. That's it. Straight in. Yeah. <laughs> no mess. Okay. Um, I, okay. Just before I put in a rebuttal to that one, I just have to get some uh, information. I assume this isn't the one that Tom matched you on, is it? Uh, no, no. Uh, he matched me on one. Okay, so you have to retire from the military in the States at 64 years of age. Ed Harris is 72. 
yeah, but he's he's not actually going to be in the military. He's not in the military, exactly. It's a, it's a film. He's the know? general. Yeah, but matter. it's a film. Like you can. Ed just... Harris isn't actually in the. Yeah, you know. Like, I know they, Ed Harris is not. They can play you know, younger. I understand. Characters. I understand what way acting works. He can. But he can he's play just far like too him. old to be uh, the general. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't think. Know. It, I don't think he is. How old was the actor that played the general? Well, this thing. That they all look was... older back in the eighties. That actor was only 55, but he yeah. looked about 80. He looked about 80, like the, yeah. I, I know, I, I do get what Greg is saying, because obviously yeah, Nick Cage is a bit course. closer in age, but that guy, Nick Cage, does not look like he's anywhere near as old as that guy did. Or he, to be honest with you, he would not be believable to me as a general. You know? Who? Nick Cage. No way. You mean like when he plays the general in two different movies? Yeah, but for this I'm talking about, I couldn't imagine him in this so, uh, well, all you had picked, uh, Robert Patrick, you know. Uh, for, Did he may have retired from acting. Well, it, he may or may not have. It's, it's I'm not pick, in the though, competition. Actually, if, he, if he's still going, it's a good pick. Yeah. Michael Bean might have been another good one, actually. Yeah, would have, actually. But um, I can understand what you're saying about the age, but I, like, I don't know about Nick Cage. I, I'm not... Not that I'm as I'm not as big as fan, I mean, but I wouldn't you're, you're be. Talking, wouldn't... You're, you're talking about him playing a cameo role. He's in it for about a minute or two. And I do think that his star is still big enough that, you know, he well he, he is crazy enough to take those fucking roles. But I, I don't know. I just I, I would see Ed Harris as more like that that other particular character. So mm. I'm going with Ed Harris on that one. Yes. So. I do love Nick Cage, though, and I think yeah. he, I think he's the world's biggest chameleon. That doesn't mean he's good at everything he does, but he definitely no. tries his hand at everything. And he's doing it more as of late as well. I think as of late... I think he's, he's gone back to more, more serious, yeah. Not even more serious. I think he's just been more selective now, where there was yeah. just a period where people were like, hey, Nick, do you want to be in this film? And he was like, yeah, sure, why not? I'll, <laughs> I'll here's, be Ghost Rider. Here's a big yeah. bag of money. Yeah, I'll be uh, Ghost Rider. Yeah, that seems good. <laughs> why not? Why not? Right, okay, so 2-1 to the Challenger. Yes. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Um, let me see. Will we go with Sully? I would say Sully and then Arius, maybe. I would have went the other way myself, but... Well, Arius and Sully? I don't mind either one. Same, same difference. You, you're the judge, you pick. Yeah, go with Sully then. All right. And back to you. No, Ted. No, this is only the third one. Yeah. It's two one, but we drew on the first one. This is oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. Pick. Um, Roy, I had a couple of names that I batted around here. Tony Revolori was one. I was like, Meh, do I do it? And then to be sort of that kind of henchman at that young of an age probably doesn't work. Yeah, uh, does have that very punchable face. Mm-hmm. Um, he was the master of it. You, when you watch Sully's character in this, he's the self-arrogant, very punchable face that's all about himself. Mm. I went with Dave Franco here. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I, I thought you might have gone the same person as me as I got, oh, I could be on for another draw here with <laughs> with the way you're saying this. Um, what do you got? Well, you went Dave Franco? Is he Dave the, Franco, yeah. He's the he's younger the, brother. He's the younger brother who isn't in as much yeah. trouble yet. He's not in bad, yeah. Uh, so I, I kind of batted around two people here because the character's kind of, as Greg said, he's got a very punchable face, but he's also like that kind of slimy, skeezy bastard the whole time. Mm. Uh, so I batted around with two. So one was uh, Chase Crawford, who is uh, the deep in The Boys. No, no, no. Okay. He's too I big. Just, I th- yeah, that's the thing. I think he's too big to take that role. Uh, although, uh, you know, Patrick, Dave Patrick Harris was kind of, or... Thing was Kelly. always kind of yeah he was also a bit Dave Patrick Kelly was always a bit too big for these roles and seemed to always still take them anyway. <laughs> um, I went with another person who did have a big star at one point in their career, but it was when they were younger and they haven't really done a whole lot since. Uh, but again, a very punchable face and somebody who's been used on this show for that in the past. Uh, I went with Tom Felton, who's got that kind of scrawny and again same as Greg said, self arrogance and just a bit of a sleaze ball. Okay. El Draco, El Draco himself. Yeah. There, has, he, has he gotten into anything yet since we've recasted him? Uh, yeah, Tom we Felton. used him in one. 
Mm. Yeah, Tom Felton's been used uh, a couple of times, I think. Oh, yeah, he's, he's definitely been used. Uh, I don't know if he's uh, has he gone back in since he had that heart attack on the golf course. When did he have uh, that? I think the, he's back in the last year. He was at a he was at one of the PGA CI yeah, events and had a heart attack. He's young I don't, enough, isn't he? Uh, yeah. yeah, he's young enough. I don't know. So he was in the Flash TV series up no, until did, 2023, did, but I don't know was it recorded did, after that happened. Do you know what I mean? Did no, yeah. did you skip? Put, did you cast him in that and then this? In our, in our uh, yeah, he got he's got in he's got in once or twice. He got in in yeah, yeah. Uh, he got in in Shaun of the Dead. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, okay. Yeah, no, he's well, been in a couple of things, I think. Well, fellas, I if champ, if you had to pick Tony Rivellar, you would have matched with me. Uh, he's just too young. That's yeah, the only but thing he had, again, that's that punchable face, and it was the first name that I actually wrote down. I was like, he's just too young to be sort of like. He's one of the lead in that group, as well. But he's one of the leads, yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't know. But, like, I mean, Sully does absolutely nothing in it, really, except look. But he, he's, like he's dictating to people where to yeah. go and what to do. Yeah. Would you take Would you take orders from Tony Revolori? Probably not. I wouldn't take fucking orders from your man, either. I'd more likely take it from <laughs> Franco than I would from Revolori, to be honest. But... Well, yeah. Well, okay. Well, anyway, um, I am going to go with... Ted's answer. Tom Felton. Can you remember his yeah. name? <laughs> Tom Felton. That's it. I just wanted to give it a bit of suspense there. Tom Felton. Yeah. Absolutely. Proper uh, little sleaze ball. That yeah. Bad. Yeah. Although I've seen him in interviews and he actually seems like a really genuinely nice person. I seen one. I seen one that popped up there where some kid went up to him and he was in like a, like a Harry Potter cloak and stuff. Yeah. And I think he was in a train station or something. And he plays <laughs> along and everything. Yeah, he just Did seems he? like a ge- yeah. He, he seems like a genuinely really nice guy. But like anything I've seen him in, because he was in um, actually speaking of Dave Franco, he was in the first uh, Planet of the Apes film as well that Dave right. Franco did. Uh, he was the he like worked in the where the apes. James all Franco done Planet of the Apes. Oh, was it James Franco did Planet of the Apes? Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. He was in that, and he was a little arrogant piece of shit in that as well. <laughs> Right, so there we go. Uh, so it's two one to, to Ted. Three one. Three one. Oh, three one. Yeah. Sorry. I won't be. I won't be shafted points here. Greg's tough enough to beat as it is. I won't be having <laughs> points deducted off us. Apologies, apologies, <laughs> apologies. Okay, so cast number four. We're going with Arius. Arius. A Ted is you. This is the one. I'm probably. This is the one I took my big risk on. Okay, because I had two people. I had Oscar Isaac for the longest time, right? Uh, and the, the backup was Pedro Pascal. Now, the reason I, I kind of felt Pedro Pascal might not take this at this point. I think he, he's maybe just too big, whereas Oscar Isaac might have taken it. Um, but I was watching something else and a name kind of came to me. And um, I've gone with them, but I don't think we've used them before. Uh, Bobby Cannavale, who... Yeah, we've used them a few times. Have we used them a few times? Yeah, Sherlock's definitely used them once or twice. So have I. Have you? Yeah, good well, actor. Yeah, good actor. He's you know he was in uh, the Jumanji 2017 one. He was like the main bad guy in that. He was in Ant Man. He's the he's the stepdad. The, the, well, yeah, like the stepdad and stuff. And you know, and he has a lot of other acting credits under his name. Like he was in the Irishman, Boardwalk Empire. Like he has a huge we thing don't behind talk about him. The Irishman. <laughs> I know, but like I'm just saying, you know, he's yeah, he's, got a he's huge, a good actor, got good a actor. huge amount. He's married him. to someone famous as well. Uh, is he? Yeah. Uh, it says uh, here he's married to born. Jenny Lumet is who he's married to. Or then, then he's going out with Rose Bourne. Oh, sorry, that was his spouse until 2003. Yeah, so he might. Oh, yeah, so he, yeah, he's with Rose Bourne currently. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, enough Next. about his love life. But. Yeah. <laughs> um, I went, I only had one name for this after re-watching it, just the kind of stylish look that Dan Hedaya had. Uh, I went with John Krasinski here. Um, yeah. See, the only thing is, and Arius is meant to be, like, when they go away, he speaks a lot of Spanish and stuff, doesn't he? Like he, like I mean, they can't be fluent in a language. 
No, but he's he's head of kind of like a Spanish. I don't know if it's Spanish or, or Me- Mexican cartel or whatever. I don't know that John Krasinski fits into the mold of being the head of a Spanish or Mexican cartel. <laughs> I mean, what what's the state that he doesn't speak a, a language? And I mean, no, but yeah, most but of those boys normally have some look of a uh, that yeah, kind of like they, Dan, Dan Hedaya definitely does not. He looks more like than than fucking Krasinski. Yeah, Dan well, has not a really. bit of a like a bit of a bit of a color to him. All right. <laughs> I mean, oh, I not really at all, Butcher. Oh, I don't know. I think the champs feeling the pressure. What the team said? I don't know. Yes, it, like it, it was a it was a tough one. He he definitely like when I was watching anyway. I felt he was kind of the head of like a Mexican or a, a, yeah. probably Mexican because of where it's based. But like a Mexican Anima, kind of is guy. It? Where are they? Uh, I don't know, but he's you know he's kind of got that. Um, it's definitely like a Mexican gang or whatever because they're speaking, or, or it could be Brazilian. He could be speaking Portuguese. Like I don't, I don't know the difference between the languages. I'm not fluent in either. They all sound the same anyway. <laughs> like to me, they do because I can't fucking it's speak any of them. But uh, yeah, it's all Greek to me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like he, you know, I kind of went with that. And then I, when I looked up Dan Hadea, he's got like Syrian heritage and stuff like that. So syrian heritage so what are you talking about being in mexico this is a complete other side of the world but it doesn't matter what i'm saying is that he had that he had a closer look to it than someone like john krasinski who is For just sure he was sent poland, down there <laughs> yeah sent well, down i mean there, syria but... and poland aren't too fucking far away um <laughs> yeah but i'm just saying like you know when you're the head of a mexican cartel <laughs> he's, he's having to gate his own fucking point no, there he, he has I'm that look that... where's he from he's from syria no but like Syrians have a bit of a darker co- color complex. Like it's very rare that you're going to see the head of a Mexican cartel just being some white boy. That's my point. Well, put it this uh, way. Let's, just, Escobar. <laughs> let's go with this, right? When you to see when you see who I picked, whether you like it or not, you'll know who I'm going to pick. I and he's probably too old for the role, but I went for Benicio del Toro. That's so not a bad show, actually. Yeah. So with that in mind. The one that looks a little bit more like Benicio del Toro is, uh, what did you call him again? I didn't even Krasinski. know the fucking name. Not, Jesus not, Chris, not, Chris, not Krasinski. Bob, Bobby Cannavale. That's the one, Cannavale. So I'm going with Cannavale on that one. So you need to dr- you need to beat me beat me out right now, Greg, isn't it? Yeah. Just win the tree, yeah. Yeah, you have to beat. Yeah, you have to beat me out right to <laughs> uh, tie it up. So. One more time, and I'll be honest, I knew I was going to tie with you for, for Cook. Yeah. I, I had but a George feeling. Said, were just too big. Yeah, I was like, I have a feeling I know who Greg's going to go, and I was like, I can't think of someone good enough, better than that person, but better than Mike Coulter to, like, not take, to, like, to take the chance to try and beat him with it. Yeah. Mm. All right, number five. Let's go with, will we go with Cindy? And leave yeah, the two I boys for the end. Has to be, yeah. yeah, it has to be. You have to leave the, the two boys to the end. Right. Let's go with Cindy. Greg, back to you. Uh, I had a couple of names that I batted around. This could be anybody, really. Yeah. Uh, it was like Tessa Thompson, probably a bit too old. Say the sink, probably in too around young. a little bit too young. Um, oh, definitely. Uh, well, yeah, probably too young. She's I, 19, 20. So I went above it and I went just a little bit above it. I went with Zendaya here. Zendaya was one of my backups. Um, I had Zendaya there. And then another backup was uh, Jasmine Savoy Brown, who is the sister in the new Scream films. The okay. sister, the twin sister in the new Scream films. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the fucking, one of the four. Yeah, one of the core four. <laughs> the core. I don't know. <laughs> um, but well, I, that one might not have been a bad show. It might not have been a bad show. I just went with someone who... Probably at the same <laughs> level in terms of, uh, well, maybe actually, maybe not, maybe a bit smaller. Uh, but it's someone I've used before in uh, Kiana Madeira, who is the girl from Fear Street, the lead in Fear Street throughout the series. Um, I had Zendaya for a while, but I just felt uh, the actress that when she had this role wasn't a big name at that time. She was also tipped to go on. Well, she was actually. She had a couple other ones before, but she was tipped she to go did, on, yeah. and then she had a, went on to have a family instead. Oh yeah, I know. But she just—I was kind of like she. She was kind of at that point where she was tipped to maybe be a big name. 
where I think whereas I was like Zendaya's already a star, do you know what I mean? And that's why I moved away from Zendaya, but like well, as you said, this could kind of be an anyone, it was kind of a tough one. Yeah. Well, Greg, you've started the fight back, I've had Zendaya with that one. So yeah. I think it was just an easy one for me yeah. to go in there. I, um, yeah, I, I had her, I just thought she's too big for that role. Like she's already a massive star in her own right. Do you know what I mean? I was like, is she gonna take the role of the the kind of ditzy uh not well not even ditzy, but just like kind of not clueless, really, but not yeah, yeah, like kind of ignorant to what's going on, like alerting the police officer or the like the mall security to be like, there's a big guy over there rather than just doing as he said. And then kind of getting braver as it went along. I, I was like, Zendaya is probably too big for that. And then I was trying to think of people who've done that. So that was obviously it was a your tough one. It was a tough That's one. why I went Jasmine Savoy Brown, because like she kind of does that in the screams. And then I was like, well, actually, Kiana Madeira has done it way better because she was the lead in a, but it was only, it was, she was the lead, but in a, in a Netflix film, you know? So yeah. Still just building her name. So I was like, I'll go with that. Too, actually. Yeah, she's brilliant in that. Uh, and she's picked up roles since then. Um, so I was like, "Oh, that's who I'll go with," because Zendaya I felt was just wait too way big. way overqualified for this role. When I did have her there, I was like, "She's mm. way way too big." Like, yeah, okay, um, okay. Well, that brings it back to uh, four, four, four two. two, two, yeah. Uh, so let's go to the big bad himself, Bennett. Yeah, hey Bennett, let off some steam. <laughs> that's such a good line. I love it. <laughs> Hello, uh, John. Bennett was kind of a tough one for me. I kind of batted the, around the Aussie himself. Yeah, yeah. I kind of bought, batted around a lot of names here for this. So, like, I think the first one I had was a uh, John Leguizmo, but he's just too old for the role. Like, he's he's, he's a brilliant, not big enough. He's he's physically, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not physically big enough, and he's also in his sixties. And Bennett is meant to have been in the same <laughs> unit. Probably in his twenties, as... but in the eighties. Uh, Bennett needs to have been in the same unit as Matrix, so I was like, I can't if I if I make that person sixty, then but like Matrix needs to be around sixty, and I was like, and then where the fuck do I go from there? Like that's too much. Um, mm -hmm. Miles Teller was another one, Jensen Eccles, um, but I settled on someone that we've used before, but not as the bad guy, but it's someone who has that kind of gritty look and like. You could believe went it like is a little bit crazy because he kind of played that role. Uh, I went with John Bernthal because he's when he is the Punisher, he's he's not a good guy, definitely not a good guy. You know, he's he's out there killing he's, people. He's a vigilante. Yeah, and he's out there killing people, but he's got that bit of the crazies in him. Do you know what I mean? So I was like, he could. He's already shown he can play the bit of the crazy. He's a pretty, pretty big dude. Uh, he's believable to be able to have been in a in a unit with Matrix and stuff mm. and being too crazy for that unit and getting kicked out and then seeking vengeance the whole time. And, you know, he he, go, he does go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Matrix before he has to let off some steam, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's the most ridiculous <laughs> scene you'll ever see from an anime movie. Yeah. Well, it's definitely he's, not the most ridiculous. He just nails him with a big pipe. <laughs> but he's definitely done more ridiculous, but it's it's up there, all right. Yeah, I went with John Bernthal. I think he has that kind of Good gritty show. look that... um. That Bennett had in this as well. Okay, good show. Oh, we got champ. I don't know if I'd like to hear John Berenthal try to do the Aussie accent. <laughs> <laughs> but he doesn't see. He doesn't have to be an Aussie. I know he. I know, like Bennett was an Aussie in this, but there's no reason he had to be. Like he's meant to have been in the U.S. Army, so there's no reason that he had to have been an Aussie. Do you know what I mean? Was we just cast a Syrian as a fucking Mexican? Only so. No, they did. <laughs> Uh, I had a couple of names. The first name I put down actually that I thought would have been a great one was Tom Hardy. And I was like, yeah, I hemmed and hawed with it. And I was like, yeah, no. Then I watched the, uh, the unfortunate thing of watching the new Fast and the Furious and then Jason Momoa uh -huh. as a bad guy is fucking fantastic. He's, fantastic fucking, he's, he's a good actor. Fucking yeah. brilliant. He was brilliant in it. He just plays the Joker, mind you. So it's I had right. him for a while. And then... Uh, I was like, no, probably not because he's ridiculously big. Yeah. Uh, like ridiculously big. Uh, and that means like you're leveling out on a couple of people that you could pick as Matrix if you pick him. Same yeah. way it was with uh, with Coulter. Yeah. So I went with uh, a Southern actor. I went with Carl Urban here. Yeah, I was thinking Carl Urban at a while. I just, 
a little bit Clay's old. A, so. Clay's a fucking fantastic bad guy. Mm. Clay's yeah. a good, good guy as well. Clay's a great vigilante. He's a great actor, yeah. Yeah, I, mm. I was looking at him myself, but he's 51 now. Now, that doesn't necessarily well, I mean, entirely I, rule him out. Like, you, you can play that little bit younger. Like, don't get me wrong. Um, But as I said, like, I, I kind of viewed Bennett as a... I know he has the kind of Aussie accent, but he was in the American military. Yeah. I don't know why there was an Aussie man in the Amer- American military. So I was like... I, know they, they I didn't still get in. No, I know they can, but I was like, I'm not going <laughs> to focus too much on the accent. I'm just going to focus on the, the character, you know, itself. But Carl Urban isn't a bad shout. Like, I can't say that again. To be so. fair, Berent- Hall's 46, nearly yeah. 47 as well. So, so it's oh, not yeah, yeah. too far away. Uh, right, so both are very, very good picks. I like both of them. I don't really want to have to pick out with those two. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to, as a little tiebreaker for myself, one of you uh, did tell, say the one I picked, and that was Tom Hardy. So, Greg, you picked Tom Hardy, didn't you? As a backup, well, I mean. As a backup, yeah. He was yeah. my original pick. Yeah, so I'm going to go with uh, Carl Urban, you know, so. What, because because he had Tom Hardy as a backup? What? No, that was no. No, I like both picks. I didn't want to have to pick one of them. So because he had an agreement with one of my ones, that's the tiebreaker for me. I like both of them, but I can't pick two of them. I'll allow it. One. Oh, I don't know about this. This is, see, this, is setting a da- this is setting a dangerous precedent. Now the sweat's on. Well, that's setting a dangerous precedent because now all you have to do is have a backup that matches who the... The person picking had, and that's the end of it now. Well, all right, then forget it. Well, I can't say it now, but I would have went, I would have probably went to a Carl Urban because of the accent, you know. So, there you go. Look, you gotta, you gotta win this one. Well, I can draw it, mm-hmm. I, just, I have you to not draw lose it. it, right? Well, before, before we do it, Carl, go in and see if we have a draw, okay? So I'll be surprised like, if we don't. Don't 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 announce it, but okay. I'd be surprised if we don't. I I would be too. I have a feeling we're gonna have the same person here. Alright then, Carl. Do we have a draw? No. Oh. oh. Currently Ted has four. What? Yeah. Greg has three. Yeah. Is Drew on on the the no, one. do we do we have a draw a draw with the final character pick? Oh yeah, if if no, oh, no, no, no it, it, doesn't don't matter, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just go on. Just yeah. it doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> um, if Ted wins, you lose. If you if you win, you draw basically. And I win. Um, the backups there, I had one was Chris Hemsworth. Just couldn't quite settle on him. Um, good actor, very good, very good lead role. Do I see him being as as dirty as he was in this? Not really. I can't see him being the guy to haul someone over a cliff and drop him. The one-liners I just don't think suit him. Uh, the other one I had in the backup was John Cena. I had him as a backup you know, as well. Big big unit turning into a good actor as well. Yeah. Um. Again, I could see him doing the one-liners. I just don't see him doing the stern kind of parts that Arnie has in it um, like I watched him and unfortunately you have, if you haven't seen it Fast X he tries to do that real serious kind of jokey <laughs> the way that Arnie does and it just didn't work for him in this one so that kind of ruled that out but uh, I went with another wrestler I went with Batista here um, who, so I has have... probably, who has probably gone on to be the best wrestling actor uh, probably the, the Rock probably is the best wrestling actor. No, Batista is a better better actor. I think Batista might have better acting ability, but like in terms, yeah, he's of Hollywood, a better wrestling actor. Oh no, not whatever about thing. He's a better actor. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, I'd be willing to accept that. Um, I same as you. I had John Cena as a backup. Uh, I had Henry. It was, it was actually the first. It was the first man that I put down. He was until I kind of seen him at Money in the Bank. Where yeah, he has lost a bit of size. He's not as big yeah. as he used to be. Do you know what I mean? He's still big. Now, yeah. He's a bit trimmer now. Uh, Henry Cavill was another one, but um, I just don't like even with The Witcher. The Witcher's a like darker, grittier version, but I don't see him having the the jokey demeanor in a way that like yeah. I know 
Matrix isn't joking, but he has the one-liners, and you need to have a bit of a comedy timing to to pull off those one-liners. And I don't know that Henry Cavill has that. Um, Zach Efron was another backup I had. Again, no. big big unit, but uh, I don't know. Like, I he's what? into the twenty stone now, isn't he, for that Von Eric thing? Yeah, and the thing is, he is a big unit. The problem is that he's wide, but he's not that tall. And for me, I was like, you still need to be quite tall because you've got that uh, scene where you're holding Sully over the thing. So you have to be at least tall enough to hold somebody by the ankle out over a cliff where they're still in line with you. Do you know what I mean? Um, We won't have a match here because I did have Batista as a backup. uh, And I used one of your backups here. I used Chris Hemsworth. I think he does have the comedy chops to be able to pull off the one-liners. Uh, when you look at him in Thor Ragnarok and stuff, like he has that ability to pull off those one-liners. He's a big unit and he's a big tall boy as well. And I just think I don't, he's a bigger name in Hollywood right now than Batista is. And if you're trying to if you're trying to sell this and the front, you know, the first name on the poster, the big the big selling point was Arnie. Chris Hemsworth's a bigger selling point than Dave Batista at this point in time. Yeah, you've also got to think, like, I know what you're saying about Thor Ragnarok, but if you look at a lot of his things in Thor Ragnarok came with a monologue, or and it wasn't just a one-word or two-word answer that you got from... No, it wasn't, from, but, uh, but one-liners, in this. one-liners are more to do with your ability to have comedic timing and stuff, and he does yeah. have that, do you know what I mean? I, I I don't I don't think he does. I think, I, as good as he was, the, the one funny bit in... in Tor was when Meek is playing the the game. He's like, "I will come to your house and kill you." Oh, that's you're thinking of the, that's the, the Avengers, but like even I didn't think I just uh, Ragnarok Tor, is Tor Ragnarok, where he's, the one where Hulk. he fights, where he's fighting the Hulk and stuff. Yeah, and he has a lot of you know, um, I, yeah. You know, it's even, the reason. I, it's the reason I stayed away from him. Even in like the original Tor, where when he gets the drink and he's out with all the like the humans and he's just lost his powers and he has the drink and he just fires on the ground he's like another one uh he delivers it with such a straight face even though it's cut like it's meant to be a joke that he's done it to all the humans and then when they call him out he's like oh i won't i won't do that again like he he, he's able to deliver those kind of half humorous half serious lines with a serious conviction which is what arnie does with his one-liners arnie's one-liners aren't said as a joke, they are funny, but when Arnie says them, he's dead serious about it. You know, I think I think uh, Batista's Drax really is that though. The serious one-liners that come out of him. Yeah, it, I think for me, it, it more boiled down to you have to Can put I- a name as the the big selling point. Like Arnie was the big selling point of this film, and which one of them is the bigger? Like because I came down to the two of them as well when I was battling this out in my head, and I was like, "Who is the bigger name in Hollywood at this time?" And the answer is Chris Hemsworth. Is it though, really? When yeah, you think that is. he's gone off since Avengers? Yeah, it is. Like, still he's, be the bigger actor. He, yeah, he, he's just had like. What do you know? In, yeah, in, well, if you think about it, like well, uh, he had another tour come out there last year, and he has films coming out this year. Like he's still, I would. Oh no, he's still say, acting. Yeah. He's still acting, and I would say he has a bigger name in Hollywood because of the likes of Avengers and stuff. Batista is still currently building his name, and I do agree. I think he is. I think Batista has become a very good actor, mm. but he's building his name. Whereas I was very surprised at how good he's become. Yeah, he's brilliant in uh, Knock the Cabin, which I only watched yeah, oh, yeah. earlier today. To but that. Chris Hemsworth already is a megastar, whereas Batista's building to be the megastar, building to be a megastar in the acting world. Chris Hemsworth is a megastar. Like, for me, for me, it would have been all about, as you said, the timing of the Lions and the, the severe nature that he has. I, uh, I don't see, do I don't see Hemsworth doing it. It's the reason I moved away from it and went with Batista, surely for Drax alone. He's just serious, but hitting those little jabs, like when he gets you one to pet Rocky. Yeah, no, he's like, <laughs> I, I, I can see where you're coming from with Batista, but name value, Chris Hemsworth gets it, and he does have the ability to do those comedic timings. But you're also looking needed. at name value that you've also built up the rest of the cast in this. Yeah. Like, apart, apart from Bill Duke in the other one, there were nobodies. Uh, sorry, Dan Hedaya, maybe. So you've gone now, you've got, they've cast Zendaya, Coulter. Yeah, well, as I said, I... 
I wouldn't have cast Zendaya there because she, I don't think she fits that role. I think she's way too big for that role. I don't think she touches that role. And that's why no, I didn't cast her there. I know that, you have, but... That's what's been cast around. So, like, you've upgraded everybody, even even in terms of... Yeah, but even um, if you upgrade everybody, you're still taking your main man, still has to be the biggest name on the fucking the it, bill. It still would be the biggest name on the bill. Yeah, and that I, means, yeah. I would say Zendaya is a bigger name in Hollywood right now than Batista is. Without, like, oh. without a doubt, I think Zendaya is a bigger name in Hollywood right now than Batista is. She, I right, don't okay, think she's bigger got? than Hemsworth. Right, okay. Uh, so I, I had two people for this role. Uh, well, John Cena was one, of course. But I, I like Alan Ritson, you know, from Reacher. Yeah, that's a good I think he would have been show. brilliant for that role. So, uh, yeah. Um, I look, they're both got great shouts. I don't, I'm, I'm not fully convinced on the the uh, Hemsworth one. I'm not fully convinced on that. I, I, I don't know how you aren't. Well, I understand where you're coming from, where he's the bigger name. But I do like, I like the whole thing of the way Greg is talking about, the way Drax delivers the, the, the kind of straight comedy, which it is, it's not meant to be funny. But like, it's more, I think it's more in line with, with John Matrix, I think. And so I'll probably go well, it's, with... it's only It's only in line with the, it's only in line with one-liners as well. Like, you know, there's still the rest of the acting to do. And that's not to... And, well, not if, to if you're going on an, on, on an actor... Or, sorry, action movies, then Batista is more than capable of doing that. Absolutely. Yeah, but I, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that Chris Hemsworth is as equally capable of it, and he has shown that he has comedy chops in the in some of the films yeah. he has done. I would just, uh, and I mean, if you, even what's he in there? Uh, what's the one that? What's the one that he's in the James Bond film? Is the uh, Spectre? Is it Batista? He's in one uh, of them where he, he's a yeah, kind of a hench when he plays deadly. He's not, not in much. Bond. No, but he's a, he's a good kind of a henchman in it, you know. But I'm not saying that he's a henchman in this, obviously. But the action aspect of it, I would give it to Batista. So I'm going to go with Batista on that one. The champion comes from 4-1 down. No, I don't know about that, lads. Well, the greatest two words in the English language. Default. I don't know how Zendaya got in as such a minor character. Well, to be honest, I don't know how Tom Felton got in in front of Franco, mind you, so... Well, they're both... Or let alone, let alone Ed Harris in front of Nick Cage. Well, Nick Cage, I would never have gone near Nick Cage for that role, but... No one's ever going to be happy with all the, with the picks, you know? that's the, the I think that's the nature of this game. If we all enjoy it, if we all agreed on everything, then it would be a very boring episode. Oh, yeah. Game. No. You know, um, so. But yeah, that levels it out with four all and... Greg continues on as champ. Um, so does this one count as a win? <laughs> it does, yeah. This one, this one counts as a win because you continue on. That's the that's part of champion's yeah. advantage, you know. That's always been part of it. Um, so Ted, you're uh, picking, yeah. Just just before you pick the movie, I went back to look at the message that Tom sent me. It was actually the general that we matched on. Uh, I know you called the thing, but I, I couldn't check my phone because it was nearly dead. Um, he gave me Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Okay, uh, as who the was general. Negan? Yeah, as the general who was Negan from The Walking hmm. Dead, but he was also uh, Sam and Dean's dad in Supernatural. Okay, mm. so so who's picking? Uh, well, it's always the loser has to do it. So I'll give the film. It'll be you stepping in to take on Greg with Sherlock coming in as the um, as the judge, which could mean trouble for Greg. Um, because in the background, uh, Carl, the two Carls of uh, aligned. They, well, they've definitely been <laughs> texting each other with their picks to uh to ma make sure they're matching up. But uh, <laughs> I'll give you another Arnie film to go with. It's a little less actiony than this one, but still, you know, obviously action with Arnie. Uh, we're gonna go with the 1996 film Eraser. Oh. <laughs> So oh. he's gonna have he's gonna have a bit of fun with that one and see how the late, that goes. The late great James Can. Yeah, it it's gonna be a tough one. I think it'll be. I think there'll be a few closely contested battles like there was here. James James Cromwell. Yeah. No, I don't think. Yeah. Is James Cromwell in it? James Cromwell's the head of the department. Oh, he is. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. 
forgot that he was there. Yeah. Um, that but, man got himself into fucking everything. I was everything. In a, lot of, a lot of things. All right. Yeah. But uh, until next Ooh, week, that's a, that's a tidy one. Yeah. Mm, it's gonna be good. But until next week, lads, uh, don't forget to like, share, follow all that good stuff here. Leave comments below to let us know who you think, like if you had picks that you think should have gone in or if you agree or disagree with the picks. Don't forget to check out the boys over on, on the slab for all your horror needs. Um, they've had a lot of guest interviews, uh, you know, looking at some of the newer horror films that have been released, looking back at making lists of films from decades gone by. Uh, so it's always worth a shout to get over there if you're into the horror genre and I jump in every once in a while to give them a dig out. Uh, but until next week, good luck. Peace.